is happening y'all welcome on back so first up we got a uh, caravan we got a couple things so let's go to the map we're gonna mark stuff up uh we're starting from the northern liurnia lakeshore and we are going to head down there should be a caravan um right here-ish i don't remember exactly it's along the road it's a caravan it moves you know what do you want from me uh anyway after that, we're going to get over here. There's a grace we're going to hit, and this is the Belfry Towers. We're going to do some stuff there. So let's, let's just mark those two for now. We'll do those two first. But uh, we're going to get a pretty nice sword for spell sword builds in a little bit here. And then a couple other little stray pieces of loot. Uh, these guys have really cool armor, the Cuckoo Knights. You can farm them if you want. It's not like, you know, when I say farm, I mean farm. Like, you know, it might take 50 kills to get that dude to drop its whole armor, but you can get it. Let's give him a little whack. I'm gonna grab this. I've had a lot of people asking about uh, how, I'm, how I'm dismounting like that. When you are riding on your horse, if you press the left stick in, it'll auto dismount you. And, uh, you know, you can actually do that into an attack. Like, you can dismount into a heavy attack if you want from the horse. Got the Cuckoo Glintstones, just to show what I'm talking about. So, if I have these dudes targeted, I go and I hit L3. Boom! So, there's a lot of fluidity in the combat here if you just, you know, give it a chance. Alright. And I leveled up my summons, so we get to see if they're good now. Uh, so, you have Pumpkinhead. I would suggest at least luring him back here to get that, uh, that dude that's throwing things at you off of your ass. I don't know if I'm imagining things, but I feel like our skeletons have gotten bigger since we leveled them up. Are they always that big? Because I don't remember them being taller than me, and now they're taller than me. Little hammer man. Little doggo. Should be another cuckoo knight around here, like a proper one. I'm not seeing him. There he is. And skeletal militiamen. They're sticking it strong. Alright. So over here there's a couple... Chests, come on, let me out. There we go. I believe that's everything. Let me check my notes. So we got the Carrion Knight Sword, which is good for spell swords. Uh, just to show that. DDD, this actually scales up more with strength. But the spell on it, Carrion Granger, is actually pretty cool. It's like, and you can level it up and then swing with a big old great sword, snap stuff. Um... So we're carrying Knight Sword, we got the Cuckoo things and the Rune Arc. We got the two more chests up top. Wait, did we get the Rune Arc? Let me see, I should have four. Okay, I probably do have, the, I think we got the Rune Arc. I need to stop recording. I did spin, it's, it's like past midnight. Now it's just like, oh, I'll just go a little bit more, just, just a little bit more. Now I'm forgetting if I grab stuff. Uh, but anyway, so that's, that's it for the encampment. Um, we're gonna go to these jellyfish. Be careful. They will obviously poison you. You don't need to kill them. I'm just taking them out because why not? We're here. Stop with the poison. Let me pick up blood grease and the jellyfish shield. Now this thing, I know people are like, oh my god, the turtle shield's so good. The turtle shield gives me stamina. But the jellyfish shield is nutty. One, this is a great shield. So, 
even though the guard boost is only at 50, we have 100 physical. Uh, but anyway, the big thing about this is Contagious Fury. It costs to 9 FP, and it is crazy strong. So, look, we're at 353 right now. If we pull out our shield. 424. Now, if you two-hand your weapon all of a sudden, you're going to lose that buff. The shield has to be out. But still, that is... Uh, let me do the math real fast. Divided by 533. No, 424 divided by 353. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a 20% damage increase for keeping the shield out. 20 freaking percent. That's huge. So if you're someone that likes to one-hand your weapon, Jellyfish Shield is going to be a fantastic choice. Now, if, if you're like me and you like to keep the weapon on your back, uh, the turtle shell is obviously still going to be nice. But, you know, don't sleep on the Jellyfish. Jellyfish is really good. So anyway, now we're heading on over to our, our next node here, the number two that we marked. It's right up here. Uh, and this is the four Belfries. There's a grace that we can get. I think the grace may be a little bit lower. There's the grace. There's the grace. Make it daytime as well. Alright, now we're just gonna run on up there. There's a couple things here, like jellyfish, and there's some enchanted... Uh, carrion trolls or carrion giants that'll show up, but you don't need to fight anything here You can just run straight on past you can see the dude over there I tried killing him to see if I if, uh, you know They dropped any guaranteed loot and they didn't but I think you can keep farming them and further sword or something else potentially But you, know, you don't get anything just for like oh hey, you know you kill that guy you get stuff. No, you don't sadly So anyway, just run on past so here's another one probably get the troll knight sword from him Actually, you have the Troll Knight Sword. I don't think the other ones did. I'm curious now. Let me see. Yeah, it's the same moveset as all the trolls we have fought until now, so y'all know the drill. Heavy attack. You know what? We're not wasting time. I'm pretty sure we get that sword later anyway. Got a lot to cover. I'm not worried about your ass. So, one, two, three, and up top is the fourth belfry. Now, these are all teleporters that can take you to various areas throughout the game. Um, there's only one that we really want to use, and that is for a certain key item you have. If you have done the Lord of Blood's Favor... Hmm, hang on. Sounds like there's a very slight sound delay happening. I'm going to fix that real fast. There we go. There we go. Now it's nice and crisp. I don't know why the Elgato's always do that with PS5. I think it's like something... Uh, I don't know. I think Elgato needs to update their hardware. But So you're going to get an imbued sword key. You notice it's imbued. That is different from the normal sword keys. But so we have three different towers. All of them need an imbued sword key. I'm going to give a brief description of each and what my recommendation is. Uh, that first tower, that will take you over to Faroom Azula. It takes you to a very small area. Uh, over there you fight a couple dudes and you get a Pearl Drake Talisman. Pearl Drake Talismans are going to increase uh, your, off, your off stats. So uh, Magic Fire, Lightning Holy, it's going to give you increased resistance to all of them, but not a ton. Personally, I don't think that's worth getting early on. If I need resistance to something in particular, I'm going to put one of these on. And the, the single targeted resistance talismans are better than the, the catch-all. Uh, this one right here, Night Sky and Ceasing, takes you to a little area close to Nakron. You can't actually do anything from it with the exception of Fight a Crucible Knight. And the only piece of loot that's over there, well, there's, there's a few pieces, but the main reason to go over there... Uh, would be getting the model necklace. The model necklace will increase immunity, robustness, focus, and vitality. So your resistance is the things like frostbite, poison, bleed, etc. Um, however, this one will take you all the way back to the start of the game. 
we're gonna go get revenge on that dude from the beginning and we're gonna get a big hawk and we're gonna get another key item that is needed to continue Nefeli's quest line now it's gonna be go time I'm gonna beat this dude's ass I just realized I still have my uh, my health debuff on. Gross. That's gone. Boom! 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 Absolutely decimated! Golden Beast Crest Shield and the Ornamental Straight Sword. The swords are actually pretty cool. Uh, they're ED, but what's neat about these things is that when you go to dual wield, or when you go to two-handed, it automatically dual wields. So you just, you know, you have a second move set, and then go boom. Very unique move set, right? Pretty cool. Um, anyway, I, I have no interest in them, but, you know, that's the thing. I don't know why I'm trying to mount my horse, just second nature, I guess. So, yeah, if you had beat him at the start, I believe you'd grab both of those then, but, you know, you can come here and kill him now and get him. And, you know, what not waste 30 minutes at the start of the game trying to poke the guy down. Uh, but anyway, after that, we're going to head on over here. We're going to go up the stairs. And we're going to go in here. And we're gonna grab this. It's a key item, you can't actually summon it. And then you're going to go here. Now that one you can summon. Now after that, jump on down. And right here is a maiden. And if you were doing the Varus quest line, we can now get that soaked with blood. And we are all set. Uh, so, we're gonna go folly on the lake. And then we're gonna head back to the church. When I'm, when I'm doing these quick navigations, and I'll say it, you know, we're going to Folly on the Lake. As a reminder, you can hit Triangle for Sights of Grace, and you can just find the one that says Folly on the Lake. If you're ever like, wait, where did he go? You know, he went so fast. I always do that. So run over this way. Um, now, I will say, this is going to make your character look slightly edgy. Uh, it's going to give them red eyes. I'm pretty sure you can go change the eyes back in my mirror if you don't want your Edgelord blood eyes. Uh, but this does give us a item that will teleport us to the Lord of Blood early on. And what's great about this is, for starters, the Lord of the Bloods area has a plus 10 Sombering, the final upgrade mat you need for Sombering, so that's huge. Uh, go ahead and talk to him. Just burn through. You gotta give him your finger, and he is going to give you a thing. Clench your teeth or something. Bloody finger. Never forget that feeling of agony, for it is what binds you to Luminary Moog. To all now, your character still has all of his fingers, but <laughs> you no. have. Anyway, talk to him some more. Pure Blood Knight's medal. medal. With the power I've gone, but you mustn't. The meeting must. Luminary, we must. Ah, one day, right, my <laughs> So anyway, you can use that, and you can teleport straight to Dude's region, farm stuff there, get upgrade mats. Uh, there's a really good blood spell there called Swarm of Flies, but that area, um, to be honest, it'll, you'll probably get your ass beat going there right now. So I would recommend just sitting tight on this thing, uh, in particular after we get access to our Sombering 7. Well... I think what I'm going to do, there, there's a point where I can, there's one boss I'd have to beat to get us a Sombering 7, and I could go 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then very quickly upgrade, uh, upgrade our main weapon to max, and that will allow you to really plow through the game. Uh, so I think we're going to do that, and we would use it at that point, because we should be high enough to survive there. But anyway, um, at this point, before we go to 
Nefeli, let me hop down here to Fort Height. Um, you should have talked to the dude over here, the Kenneth dude. We'll know in a second if Fort Height is overrun by demi humans or not. Yeah, a lot of people are like, ooh, blood spells? There's there's very limited blood spells, which we could put one on. Well, yeah, why not? Let's let's put one of the blood spells on. Uh, to my knowledge, there are four blood incantations in the game and two blood sorceries, which is fairly limited. Uh, but one we picked up already, Blood Flame Blade. I'll start using that because why not? You know, might as well. I got the, got the, the claw mark seal on. It's not like I need a heavy stat investment to use that. Um... But there's Swarm of Flies, that one's pretty nice. It shoots out a literal Swarm of Flies, and when they reach the enemy, they just, like, chew away at it. And the flies themselves don't do a lot of damage, but it builds up and procs blood extremely easy. So, if, if you're a fan of spoiling content for yourself, and you've already watched my blood build that's on the channel, well, it's a title Arcane build, because it's Arcane, but... You probably have an idea of what it is capable of, because, oh, man. Lead can get silly. So, I like that spell a lot, but you have that, you have Blood Flame Blade, you have one that comes from the boss himself that uh, allows you to just throw out a big arc of Blood Flame, and then you have one that does like a claw swipe, and then it explodes, and that one's not very good. It just it, stuff doesn't get hit by it. So, go talk to this guy, and he'll talk about how he needs to find somebody who can roll. With haste the true and... True and proper lineage to fix this up. Great, but now for a true... he says he's looking for a true and stalwart lord. We're gonna head on back to the round table again. And real fast, let me just make sure. We'll see if, if Nefeli's ready to talk to us. She should be. But if not, go back to Gideon and then go to Nefeli. No, how could I say? Father has a now. Give her that. that ash? I can smell the ancient storm in it. My thanks. I'm... I don't feel the presence of spirits. Still, it reminds me of my first hawk. Thank you. In this ash, it reminds me of... Alright, so her dialogue's caught up. Now, at this point... No one really knows how this quest continues. I'm gonna hope that we discover the rest of it during all the prep work that we're doing. It's like, like I said, you know, this, we're still taking notes to produce this walkthrough. We're not done. Um, but the current running theory is that the guy we just talked to, Kenneth Height, that he looks for, you know, the true heir or somebody that could properly rule it, and that that's her. And how those two connect is still unknown. Whenever that's discovered, um, I'll either cover it later in this series, or I'll come back and I'll pin a comment. But that's that's the current running theory, um, is that she's actually the, the true lord. But anyway, for now, we're going to head back to the Belfries. Back to the Belfries. We'll get rid of that, and we'll get rid of that, and we'll go back over here. Yeah, stuff like that is why I was like, you know, it will take a long time for people to figure out stuff in this game. It's very obscure quests. Uh, so there's going to be an Ever Jail here, and then there's going to be like Revenger Shack here, and then um, head southwest. There's going to be an Ash of War along the pathway, and then there's like a place here we're going to. So it's all south. I mean, we're just we're going to head south. You can see all the lines are leading south. This will get you carrying Glint Blade in a second, which is a pretty cool spell. It's the one you saw that guy use on me earlier, where he summoned three giant swords that were floating above his head. This will give me a chance to try out that whole Blood Flame Blade, see if it's any good. Give me power of Blood of Flame. Tell you what, it does look cool. Any of these big dudes, same strategy always applies. Oh, I can't, I didn't get the critical. That's okay, we'll kill him here. His name is Balls. Balls. 
So we're at 4.15 with this on. I'm gonna take it off and put it back on, see how much AR we're getting from it. Cause I'm guessing we're doing fire and extra bleed buildup. Uh, 4.15, 4.15 and our 3.74, so it's like 35 damage. Not a ton, but I mean, better than nothing. It's a pretty cheap cost. So that takes care of balls uh, with him right on out this way. And kind of tucked in between the rocks there. You can already see it. That's the Revenger Shack. There's going to be a bunch of little goodies that will happen here. A bunch of little things for you to pick up. Go on and tap that grace. We don't need the rest just yet. Let's just tap it. Let's tap it. Put this on. Let's see that. Where are you at? Come on out, friend. I'm supposed to get invaded here. Mm -hmm. Where are you at? I don't know why he's not invading us. He usually invades us. Huh. I'm not sure. Maybe it's because we killed him already? I thought, you know what? Well, all right. Anyway, if uh, if you get invaded here, it's Edgar. Edgar is the guy that we killed do, 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 do. down here while he was like over his dying daughter's body. I think he just invades you here if you don't kill him, but he drops the same exact stuff. You get a pl plus eight banished Knight Halberd. You get a Shabriri Grape. Um, I think there's a couple of like just random loots that are here if you let them invade you. And I'm not seeing those right now, but it's, it's nothing of value. It's just like, you know, consumable garbage. So anyway, since he's not invading us, we're going to head on out to the next part. Just going down there. If he does invade you, it's an easy fight. You'll obliterate that dude, especially if you're running around with the plus five weapon like we are. I don't know if I mentioned it previously, but these dudes, the, uh, the guardians, the earth tree guardians, that spear they have, that sword spear, it is one of the best dexterity weapons in the entire game. So, if you're doing like a dex-oriented build, uh, that weapon will will annihilate stuff. Very good. That is a sword dance. Kill the bats if you want, doesn't matter. It's heading down here. And in we go. Okay. Um, do, do. Do, 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 do. So we got the Ash of War sword dance, and now we're at Road Ends Catacombs. And yeah, let's be good. I'm gonna push my strength up a bit. I'm gonna get high enough. I'm so I'm close to my 40 mark, so I'm not that worried about it anymore. Um, put this guy on. I've seen some people uh, that are like really struggling with these things. As a reminder, you can always just use a shield. Just block them and then boop them. Block and boop. Now the boss is actually hidden behind some secret walls here right here but we're not going for that just yet there's some other stuff we're gonna do first we'll just leave that because we're gonna be coming back here we'll go on and pick up all that grave glove wart like doing that this one is also all swalls See, a high enough barricade, and not even barricade, but just a, a shield that has high enough guard boost, and these dudes will literally bounce off of it, and then you can just whack the shit out of them. You know, he stopped going in depth to this. I was going through the comments, and someone was like, Please tell me we're done with the stupid gargoyle stone things. And I was like, Poor, you poor soul. 
Uh, so we get this watchdog staff, big old strength weapon as a uh, sorcery that fires some magic stones. It's not that good, but you know, if you're looking for a new flavor of bonky stick, that's one of them. This one is a trap. That guy. them all dead go ahead and pop the chest now you have more soldier ashes except this time it's the Ray Lucaria flavor of soldier that one tastes more like cherry while the last one was more of a creamsicle I didn't mean to hit that trap that was just me dipping off to the side after hitting it uh, let's see invisible walls sword strength beat stick continue the bottom for ashes return to the first set of hidden stairs yes so now we go in here. The rune arc. Nope, not that way. We'll go this way. Always the, the, the hidden wall dungeons are always the worst. Lots of root resin down here, which is nice. Uh, so this boss is a little tricky. This boss is a snail that's hiding, and you need to boop the snail. Now, if you kill, there's a, a, a knight that's going to get summoned. If you kill the knight, the snail's location will be revealed. But you can find the snail by just looking for the glowing light that's on the ground. So it's a lot easier to just kill the snail because the knight you're fighting is a crucible knight. And we all know how fun crucible knights are so what i'm going to suggest is you go in you're going to pop some summons and you can kind of see off in the distance there's a little there's a little twinkle that was off in the distance there and that's the snail so while he is distracted in general he usually goes to one of the two corners but you can see how I saw like a little light from him. I'm gonna let him disappear again. It's not that light. Ah, no, don't look at me. Yeah, so you can see over here, there's, it's like a glow. It's a faint glow. And that's what you want to look for. Find that faint glow. Once he's gone, the knight falls down. You get your sorcerer glenstone ashes. And that's another dungeon cleared. Nice and easy. Which, that is so much easier, because I remember on the Let's Play, oh my god, dude, I struggled so much on that thing. Because I didn't know that you could just smack it while it was invisible. I thought you had to reveal it first. And you didn't. And that was, uh, that was not fun. Um, let's see. Uh, we're going to go to Revenger Shack. And we're going we're gonna to wrap up this whole area, I think. Pretty close to it. There's only a couple things left to do. Uh, so next, we're going to go kind of down this path. There's a tower here we want to hit. And then we're going to just head on over to the Earth Tree. So. Southeast for a tower. Climb inside and get the Memory Stone. Then we kill the Earth Tree. And then we go to Revenger Shack again. And then we're going to be heading on out into the lake. And that will be for a new episode killing these things. I'm hoping the thing drops because it's, it's it's so good. As a, I like its moveset a lot too. The more I've played with it, it's rather unique. So there are two towers like this. Um, this one is stupid. The other one is a real puzzle. This one's a dumb puzzle and I'll, I'll explain why in a second. First we're gonna get a grace. The Albanuric village over there. You can see it. So, uh, these, I just call them the Erudition Towers. It's because when you get up, it says Erudition Guide Thee. And you have to do the Erudition Emote. 
And you have to do it while you're wearing a sorcery mask. And when you do, a ladder will appear right here and then you can go up top and you can get your item. There's another tower later in this zone where you have to do that. But for whatever reason, uh, you don't have to do that at this one. You can just climb up this. I was making the notes on stream and people were like, no man, just climb it up. And I'm like, no, no, you gotta, you gotta do the, the, you gotta do the gesture, right? Yeah, you gotta do the, the erudition gesture, and then you gotta put on the sorcery mask so it thinks you're sorcery, and they're like, no, just climb this one. Wow. So I don't know if that's intentional. Uh, if that, if that ever gets patched for some reason, you, you get the erudition emote to do this, uh, which that is something we're gonna cover later, because we, we're not at that point yet. Uh, but anyway, let's head on up and knock out the erd tree. And this will give me a good opportunity. Let's test her out. Let's pull out the tenant and see what she's capable of doing. I'm gonna take these guys out. I don't want any distractions. So yeah, see, a real archer. Not that little dude. This is an archer archer. She's here to whoop some ass. I'm gonna put on blood flame. I mean, this thing's gonna get annihilated, but I really wanna see what Lieutenant can do. Hey buddy, look at me. All right, Latena, it's your turn. So she's basically, oh no, I mean, it's pretty rapid. Yeah, I think if you were like playing with like a great shield and stuff, that could be pretty good. Not golden land, not the golden land. She got the kill. I mean, it's just kind of funny see, seeing her sit in the background like, pew, 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 like, I'm contributing, and it's like, yeah, yeah, you're not really, you're not really contributing. Like, okay, we'll give you a pass, I guess. But I mean, I can't, you know, I don't have the FP for the good summons. Um, which, I mean, builds like this, you know, ultimately it's going to come down to Mimic. Mimic, we get much later, but he's so good. So good. Um, anyway, we're going to wrap things up here. I know a lot of y'all are like, hour episodes, but, I mean, it took like an hour and a half just to get all these notes to... See, the thing is, it's not just like, you know, oh, go blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, like we're, we're, we're starting up, up here, and then we are like scouring this thing. I mean, literally, if y'all watch the walkthrough prep, you'll see we are like sweeping all over and then we're going back to places oh is there anything on this little thing no okay let's go over this way like there's just a lot of time that goes into these so you know by the time the let's play series is done i'll probably go up to two a day but uh just it takes a lot of time so anyway on the next episode we are going to be doing some stuff over here some stuff over here some stuff over here some stuff here we're basically knocking out a huge trunk all the water stuff you know because we've we've knocked out this portion and we've knocked out the south portion of the water now we've knocked out this so now we're going to knock out basically all of the water stuff with the exception of gate town we're gonna this gate town is going to lead us into here uh and then this stuff over here we're probably going to save till after the royal academy just because some of the stuff there is is kind of a pain in the ass there's some you know you'll you'll meet frenzy for the first time but anyway we're wrapping this one on up bunch of stuff in the next episode as well as the key we need to get into Ray Lucaria. So stay tuned and I'll catch y'all then with some more.